moved by the one. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Do we have any comments or questions? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item number one passes. Item number two to receive and place on file drainage repairs. And please report at this time we have none. Item number three is a public hearing. So we will hold a public hearing on the amendment to the current year's county budget for fiscal year ending 20, June 30th, 2014. Uh, I'll now declare the hearing open. Do we have any written comments? No written comments or objections. No written comments or objections. Uh, can you give us a brief <coughs> synopsis of what we're doing here today? A brief synopsis. Uh, basically, there's some new programs uh, implemented in public health, and uh, therefore there's an increase in revenue as well as expenditures for this program. The current is uh, There was also some re-estimates on secondary growth and uh, encapsulation um, grants for 300000 to implement a community care team network, which will bring services with the public health agency, home health agencies, community resources, the hospital, and the very health. So that program will um, network all of those uh, providers to provide care to the citizens of Washington. Been moved and seconded. Do we have any further discussion on this? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Item number seven, approve the pay increase to $54,738 for Sheriff Deputy Josh Van Ways, effective March 1st, 2014, and Derek Christie at $45,289, effective March 1st, 2014, as per labor contract. March 1st, March 11th, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll move on to number seven. Second, do we have any discussion or comments? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item number seven passes. Item number eight, approve wage increase for Adam Strew to $14.75 per hour, effective February 27, 2014, as per the labor contract. Mr. Chairman, I'll move item eight. Second. It's been moved and second. Do we have any discussion on this item? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote on this. All in favor of the wage increase, say aye. 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 Opposed? Item number eight passes. Item number nine, receiving place on file the resignation of Deanne Olson, effective February 28, 2014. Mr. Chairman, I move item number nine. Second. It's been moved and second. Do we have any discussion? All in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? Motion, motion passes. Item number 10, approve, approve a five-day special Class C liquor license for Domestic Sexual Assault and Outreach Center. Chairman, I move by the Second. Move and second. Do we have any discussion or comments? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item number 10 passes. Item number 11, approve and authorize the chair to sign an operations and maintenance agreement with Johnson Controls period of July 1st, 2014 through June 30th, 2015.
Not necessarily. I mean, it's just based on like, an insurance policy. It's a hardware maintenance agreement basically to cover our storage servers and the switches that they're attached to. Um, if they go down, we go down. So, and so of course we need somebody to help us get things back and running. It's better with no sponsors. So that's what it, that, that this item is requesting is requesting the hardware portion of it. Any questions for service agreement between IP, IP Pathways and Webster County for VMware software support in the amount of $4,125. Mr. Chairman, I have item number 13. Can I take a second to do that? I for lack of something. No, sorry. No, sorry. Okay, we have a second. We have a motion to second. Andy, 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 Andy. This is the software agreement for the software that runs the service where all these servers are Andy, the service. Yes, the service. If the servers and the service goes down, can these guys watch TV anymore? Unfortunately, yes. No. <laughs> So what this agreement does is it, uh, it allows for the, the shared use of this road. Um, and basically the reason for this is because the mining operation that occurs uh, on Gypsum prop uh, USG property, they're governed by MSHA, the Mine Safety and Health Administration. So they are requiring that we have separation of use. So anytime that mining is occurring or operation uh, to and from uh, on that road, we're not to be there. And anytime that we are there, um, mining is not to be on there. So, it's setting up a process for us to use that road conditionally, um, and in, in here it lays out all the notification processes and all those sorts of things. So we'll be using the road basically for uh, hauling uh, machinery and materials to phase two for construction purposes. Um, down the road we'll be using it for maintenance and um, emergency access. So yeah, great. So there's a picture, so it's the white road that's kind of cutting down through the property there. It's a, it's a gravel road, it's maintained mainly by USG, and they use it to haul from uh, where they're actively mining to their, their um, maintenance ship and haul material and, and machinery back and forth. So there's already a process set up for both phase two and phase three where um, riders will have access through a controlled gate system. This basically, this agreement lays out how we're gonna operate those uh, gates and, and process equipment and people and it also lays out all of our subcontractors that we will hire the processes and, and insurance regulations and everything that they'll have to go through so um, Corey's office has already reviewed this agreement and her comments have been incorporated into this so we're moving forward with so if you across the road that we go on to the bridge correct yeah when they go to phase three they'll be going underneath that bridge there Right now, they will it limit the access to phase two? Going across that road. Um, 
it, it can potentially. Typically right now there's not frequent use of it. So what will happen once phase two opens up is anytime the USG needs to go through there on an irregular uh, basis, their operators will just get out, double close the different gates, so operators will have a short time period where they can't get through there, the truck will go through, they'll reconfigure it so riders can get through. If there's an extended period where they're hauling a lot of equipment, maybe in a day or something like that, they'll notify us in advance so that we can get that information out on a, on a website or on the current uh, phone system to let riders know. Because if you come here to ride 800 acres, you only get to ride 200 acres, and people aren't gonna be real thrilled about that process, so. That sounds like it's um, pretty generous of the USG to agree with that. Definitely is. Um, they've been through countless meetings with us and MSHA on this to make sure that everybody was comfortable because they're strictly governed by you know the way that they can operate and do business. So um, allowing our access on those is a, you know it's a liability for them. And they will be mining there for another 15, 20 years. Probably. They will because there's even a section which is phase four that's identified kind of in between the phase one and phase two that um, they haven't even targeted. It's, it will eventually be part of the park, but it doesn't even have a date as to when that's going to be targeted and turned over the property. So currently some of the, and the reason that Webster County Improvement Corporation is a party to this agreement is they currently own a portion and then they lease the rest of it from USG. So they're, they're pretty much the landlord for us on this. We get brought into it on the county side because of our maintenance and operations agreement through our 2080 agreement with the BNR. People might want to know, where's the campground going to be? Uh, if you can just raise your pointer up there a little bit. Notice the ponds, the two double ponds right here. So go straight north of that, and that whole area right there is where the campground is under construction. So the big parking lot is up here in your top right. So they'll come in there, they'll follow this road down. Yep. And then they'll, they'll have access to it right there. Amy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other comments or questions for Matt? Board, any other comments? Okay. Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor of item number 15, or item 14, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Item number 14 passes. Item number 15, to receive and place on file a planning and zoning commission's report and set the time and date for public hearing on the first considered on first consideration to amend zoning ordinance number 46. Mr. Chairman, I move item 15. It's been moved and seconded. Do we have any discussion? Oh, yeah, we have to set a date. What date should we do? Set a time date. Set a time date. Yeah, because that's all. Thank you. 
second. Move and second and bring it. Yeah, we'll presentation on this? Or just, uh, do you have a copy of the agreement, the same agreement we've had for the previous two years, and, and along with that agreement, the state's terms, and then there's a uh, map, and they did provide us with the proper certificate of insurance. I recommend you approve this. Comments or questions from the board? All in favor of item number 17, so you can probably say aye. 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 Opposed? Item number 17 passes. Item number 18, approve setting public hearing on fiscal year 2015 secondary road budget and five-year construction program during the regular board meeting of the supervisors at 10 a.m. April 8, 2014. Mr. Chairman, I'll move item 18. I'll second. I'll move it in second. Do we have any discussions, comments? This that uh, we've been doing this last few years in order to reinforce there's uh, give the public an opportunity to uh, provide input if you, by setting this hearing and then uh, putting a notice in the papers uh, you know, provides the opportunity for the public to come in and review what we intend to do in our five year plan and uh, go from there, I guess. And I prefer to wait till I have to turn all my documents into the DOT by April 15th. I usually like to wait as long as I can. The eighth and second as late as I like to wait. The longer you wait, the more you know and it's about funding and about letting projects, what prices you're getting and so forth. So as far as the current year, but you know, I want to express that this is the current year for us the four, so it's a five year program. And uh, there's always some flexibility in the five year, but the first year is pretty firm, the second year is uh, relatively firm also. We'll talk more in the eight. Questions for Randy? Seeing none, all in favor of item number 18, so you can back say aye. 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 Opposed? Item number 18 passes. Item number 19 is to approve the plans and specifications for bridge replacement projects L-60-3340 Dash seven three dash nine six L dash sixty nine twenty eight ten dash seventy three dash ninety four L dash sixty nine twenty eight twenty dash seven three dash ninety four and L dash eight zero one zero zero eight dash seventy three dash ninety four and setting the bid letting at ten thirty AM on April eighth to the order. Moved and seconded. Randy, do you have any comments on this? Just that uh, the, all four bridges are have low postings. The first one listed has a six ton posting. The next two have four ton postings, and the last one has six ton posting. And I think uh, a while back I might have submitted some photos to you. They have uh, uh, some very deteriorated piling. That, that uh, that's the reason for the low posting primarily. They're just uh, old structures. Piling and hold the bridge up are very deteriorated. And um, we have uh, 11 or 12 projects scheduled for this coming fiscal year, and these are four of them. I, I, the process being, I want to recommend we let these four see what the prices are and uh, then proceed with possibly letting more. And the construction period of these, they will not be constructed prior to July 1st. Uh, part of the reason is that all four, or three of the four have a Topeka Shiner issue where you can't do any work from May 15th to July 31st on, on the stream anyway. So, so get them laterally, let the contractor get them slotted in, and then their precast concrete cones, and they can, the fabricator can start getting them made in their factory, and a lot of planning that way. Can these be that individual that be all done at once? The, uh, there's two on one mile, and, and there's one about three miles from those two, and then one up a little north. Uh, that, uh, I think we're going to uh, tie the two on the one mile and, and uh, maybe let the contractor have that on, on the other. So hopefully, we get four or five bidders. That's what we usually do. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for Randy? <coughs> Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. Um, all in favor of the plans and specifications by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Item number 19 passes. Item number 20 is not an action item, it's just uh, an item where um, we will review the proposals from the vendors to purchase two random axle pump trailers.
item uh, 20 and 21 kind of go back to back. I guess that's when we purchase equipment, we've been doing it in that fashion. Um, the purpose of purchase, uh, purchasing two puff trailers is that we had finally last November we took delivery and paid for two tandem axle trucks. They had some snow equipment on, but they were uh, specked out and plumbed to accommodate pulling the trailer. In order to pull the trailer, you have more horsepower, bigger transmission, so forth. And then we've had long, many discussions on this. And so this is the part two of the, of the, of the process. Uh, uh, shop foreman Jesse Becker and I, we spent considerable time researching product information and specs about puffs. We, we checked with other vendors we, uh, we knew about, and we also checked with other many other counties. What we did find, there wasn't a, a real good spec out there for doing so, so we did put together a specification the best we could, I think, in your packet there. I did that as I mailed you, that was like a seven-page document about specs. And uh, uh, I did do a lot of uh, checking of Vendor. I mean, uh, the, the, there are producers that sell puff trailers, but they're Alabama, Oregon, and Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, but I think the unique of a puff trailer is that we have to marry the tandem with the puff trailer. That whoever the successful vendor is has to have our truck to do the final uh, plumbing, hydraulics, and, and so forth, and brakes and electrical. And so forth. And so uh, we did send out a proposal to Hawkeye Truck Equipment out of Des Moines and not to Highway Truck Equipment in Fort Dodge. Only got one proposal back. And uh, that was in the amount of $40,642 per trailer. And uh, I, I will say that the one of the we did get information from Winnebago County, Winnebago County was one that had some good information, I would say, that that, that pricing is pretty consistent with, with their pricing. And then they purchased one in 2012 for a few hundred dollars less. So yeah, we're, that, that's a good reference tool, I guess. I, we're, we're specking out a you know, stainless steel box and stainless steel wheels. Want to invest this one? It's going to last a while. But uh, if my memo to you, you know, it, this trailer will be able to pull, uh, uh, will haul 15 tons of payload on this pup trailer. So, you know, the little last name is the yeah. oh, Excuse me. <laughs> I mean, I meant to. Uh, oh, I'm on. It says, yeah, no, no, excuse me. Excuse me. I meant to say, okay. Yeah. To lighter, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 The, the the dump body itself and the wheels are yes, yes. Oh, excuse me. And so on that one chart that you have in your hand out, the um, you have the weight of the trailer and the payload weight and you got the gross weight, so you can see where how you how you haul about close to fifteen pounds, not just not quite, twenty eight pounds, three hundred pounds.
upcoming challenges that they have, our budget, and how we're going to move forward with the road entrance way permits and want to know where we're at with that. It was a good meeting, and I appreciate uh, organizations like that taking the time to express their concerns and give us their opinion. Uh, Bob and I met uh, with a group of people talking about their service to Fort Dodge yesterday. Uh, I'll wrap it up in a little bit. I, I'd say we weren't happy with the proposals that were submitted. We're going to go back to the drawing board and ask for new proposals. Uh, unfortunately, I think Fort Dodge is in a position right now that um, the type of service that we've had out there at the airport just isn't available because of pilot shortages and a couple other governmental problems. Uh, but uh, the city and the control flights primarily with, with us attended um, are working on trying to get service back up and running here for the town. Very important. Uh, Opinion, especially for some of these uh, companies, CJ and Cargo, and some of these companies that we've attracted to town. Uh, people don't realize the amount of uh, flights they take. Uh, so we need to try and get that work done. That's all that came out of that meeting so far. I got, I got an email from Peter Kim yesterday. He's going to be meeting with CJ and going back to Shanghai. They're China. He was good for the good for the county, really good to work with. And I think CG don't miss him here. He did a good job. Mr. Sanger, did you have anything? No. All right, <laughs> well, I uh, I did want to report in addition to the favorable comments we received from the couple of county supervisors at the county social services meeting. I was rather pleased to see that um, um, the county social services structure has been set up to this point has been a cooperative sharing of, of uh, county employees amongst the region and um, I think that there's a realization with a 22 county region and a 23 to 26 million dollar budget there's a there's a need for you know some how do you say ongoing control that, that you know that uh, you can make sure that you're affecting the proper people with the proper recognition of their services, wages, things like that. And so I believe that there's movement towards getting a more of an autonomous uh, structure to the organization so that their the director is their employee and is directly responsible right now. The, the director is actually employed by Floyd County and is hired and fired by Floyd County. And that's not really the best situation, um, I believe, of that organization. I think they're doing a, a, a really good job. They're ahead of the game. Uh, so I, I'm pleased to report that I think they're within the ahead and understanding what needs to be done to keep it viable. So that's, uh, that's my report. So, anyone have anything else? If not, I'll call for a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Move in second at all.